Hey, it's Beaker. I'm doing a video today about how to build in creative mode in Valheim and testing out the different types of building materials and how far you can push the limits in this game. So here we go. Let's get to it. Um, I, s I built a world called Playground that I kind of just test things in. Okay, so first off, let's go ahead and get creative mode set up. So if I hit F5, it opens up the console. You'll need to type in dev commands and hit enter. That turns them on. Then you want to enter debug mode. And hit enter. Make sure that says true. Um, and that will allow you to build without cost and do other things. I'm also going to set time of day to 0.5, which is noon, um, just so you can see things in the video. <laughs> I, this is actually the second time I've made this video, and the first time I didn't set the time of day, and it got dark, and no one could tell what I was doing. So. <laughs> this is really my first video on YouTube, so kind of just a new mistake and had to redo the video. So here we go. Um, the other thing I'll do is put myself in ghost mode. Um, what that allows me to do is not get attacked by creatures as I'm, as I'm testing things out. Um, another few things that are useful while you're in this is if weather pops up and it's bad and you're having a hard time seeing stuff, you can just um, speed up the time and set the time forward by like a thousand seconds and that'll usually get rid of the weather. Um, another thing I found that's helpful is if events pop up, and it won't in this tutorial because we don't have the criteria, we haven't met the criteria for an event to happen, but if you were in creative mode when you're building your base and stuff and an event happens, you can just type stop event and that will stop the event if you don't, if you don't want to deal with it during while you're building. Okay, um, and we should be set up. Once you're out of that, hit F5 again to close the console, and you can um, hit Z to fly. A space bar takes you up, left control brings you down, and then obviously just your WASD keys. And then you hit B to um, set no replacement cost to true. Okay, now that we have that, let's start going over some of the building materials in the game. And... You can see that I've done some extensive testing here on how far you can build with things. Um, I just wanted to do this because there's a lot of misinformation going around about how this works. Um, it's pretty much just math all the way across the board. Like, in general, as you take the material that you're building with and you count as many spaces away from the... Um, the foundation piece and that kind of determines whether or not it'll hold so let's just go ahead and start with wood since that's what you're going to be beginning with if you're starting out a new um, a new game so wood I'm going to turn on crafting here and just have it on repair let's go over the colors real quick if it's this blue color you see that means it's a foundation piece or it's attached to a piece of the map um, this is what you want to always build off of and when you're like trying to calculate whether or not you can build something, whether the integrity will be good enough to get there. Start from a foundation piece and then count away. So when you're dealing with wood, you can see that, that you can build seven pieces away from your foundation piece. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So seven pieces away from the foundation. And that holds up kind of across the board vertically. Um, it's different going horizontally like you can only build four pieces out horizontally with wood that's the max no matter what you do um, if you're just using wood and the further you go up the less it gets so if I were to add little pieces to the ends of these they'll break off and it actually goes in halves like right here that's a half that's a one meter piece and then you can see it goes by one meters up to the top like that. It creates kind of a slope. But here at the bottom, these two can go four, but they can't go any further than that. Even the half meter piece won't, or the one meter piece won't stay on these. They'll both fall off. So the rule is kind of seven pieces away from the foundation unless you're going horizontally, and then it, it decreases kind of dramatically. So this is five, for example. That's the foundation piece, and then four more. One, two, three, four. And you can't go any further um, horizontally. And then if you count like up here, this is three, but that's like the foundation of one, two, three, four, five. So it's like six pieces total. So it just kind of depends. You'll never exceed four with wood, but um, you can, you can if you're just building straight vertically, you can get to eight pieces in a row. 
let's go on to core wood now. So, oh, um, I did want to point out that building horizontally, if your if your foundation piece is horizontal, the same rules still apply. So, if you want to get just like one piece further out, if you build your first horizontal piece into the ground and it's a foundation piece, then you can go four more past that. So you can get like almost five pieces horizontally there without having to add more support. Okay, so if we move on to core wood. Um, you can see that it actually builds taller with core wood than you can with regular wood. So you get, if you come up to the top here, um, here's 10 right here. So you can actually get to 12 pieces of core wood before it won't let you, let you build vertically anymore. So you can see that I've done that with the 2 meter pieces and the 4 meter pieces. It doesn't really matter. If I grab the two meter piece again and I come up here to the top, both of these will explode. You get the same distance using the twos and the fours. It it's, doesn't really matter which one of these that you use. And then you also get a little bit further horizontally as well. So from a foundation piece you can build one, two, three, four, five, six pieces instead of the four. And then it, it will slant up like that again as you get higher. It, look, it kind of follows the same pattern, but um, you just get two extra pieces, so you can build a little bit further with that. And that's kind of what you're limited to until you get to, uh, you know, the swamps and start getting iron in the game. Um, and then your ability to build high and <laughs> gets much, much better. So here's where things get a little bit crazy. So if we move on to these wood iron poles, um, you can actually build 25 wood iron poles in a row without having to stop. The interesting thing about wood iron poles is, so we come up here, there's 10, so that's 20 meters because each pole is 2 meters. So it's 10 poles at 20 meters, here's 15 poles at 30 meters, 20 poles at 40 meters, and 25 poles at 50 meters. So here at the top, I'm capped out. 25 is the hard cap for these wood iron poles. It's going to explode here in just a second. One of the interesting things about the wood iron poles is that they're so far away from the foundation piece that it takes a second to calculate all the way up the, to calculate whether or not the piece is valid, all the way up this chain of wood iron poles. So see that exploded after about 30 seconds. Um, and that can be a little bit deceiving. So be careful if you're building kind of at the limits because it'll take a second to calculate whether it sits or not. Um, give it a moment see if it explodes otherwise you could like go on with your build and then come back later and things will blow up um, okay the interesting thing about wood iron poles is that they can build horizontally and vertically exactly the same with the wood and the core wood you had less ability to bird to build horizontally than you did vertically but with wood iron poles you can build horizontally exactly the same as you can vertically as you can see like this is just as far horizontal as I can build vertical. Um, so you have to count this piece here as one and then I can build 24 out. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 24 pieces from that foundation piece just like vertical. 24, 24 of these pieces away from the foundation piece up like this. So 25 in a row whether you're going horizontal or vertical. Um, that's kind of cool. I like building with these and then I don't like the way they look so I usually cover them up while I'm doing the build. After I've built it all out I usually cover them up like that and they can because I like the look of the wood better than the wood iron poles. Okay let's move on to stone and then we'll combine stone and the wood iron poles and that's probably what you'll be doing when you're building stone structures. It's very rare that you'll just build a stone structure out of just stone because the wood iron poles add so much, they help you so much building that you'll probably combine the two. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but just just with um, this is a one by one stone wall that I was testing on and if I just build a stack of one by one stone walls um, I can get to 16 meters or 16 of them stacked before um, they start to explode and I'll put one on here, it should blow up immediately and yeah, I won't even attempt it. Now stone is interesting because you can't build horizontally unless you have these um, wood iron poles. So if I do that, it should have issues really quickly. I think like you can build one here, but if I come up here onto these red ones and I do that, it's very rare that it'll let it stay. It'll start to calculate and then blow up here in a second. If you're down towards the bottom, you might be able to build one out, but 
two is just a no-go. Um, it's interesting that one hasn't exploded yet. I wonder if it's valid up there. Anyway, you can't get very far away from the foundation without using those wood iron poles. Um, here, if you just attach one wood iron pole to one corner of these, you can get a lot of extra height here. So you actually get an extra nine stacks, um, all the up to 25 meters. So just with adding one support, one wood iron pole, you end up getting almost half again as many pieces, more than half again as many pieces. You go from 16 to 25. So you get much higher if you just add a lot of support with wood iron poles. You can get all the way up to 30. But this is a little bit interesting because if you only support one side, so you can see I've added two supports, so you'd think there'd be more support here. And then came up here, I can still only get to 25 because I've only supported one side of the structure of the stone. If I support two sides of the stone, so if I do it diagonally like this, if I add a support like on the kitty corners, then what happens is I can get all the way up to 30. Um, and that's all the support that this piece needs. I don't need to add more support than that. If I do, and I did here, I added one on every single corner, I can't get any higher than 30. 30 kind of seems like the hard cap for stone. If you're 30 meters above a foundation piece, it's it's over. You're not <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Um, we can also see that it, it applies this direction as well. Like this is 30 meters. It's, it's 29 pieces away from the foundation piece, or 30 meters. So as long as you're using those wood iron poles, you can get you can just suspend stuff all the way out here like that stone piece that you can build with, which is this four by two. And I found some interesting things. Um, it matters how far away all of the stone is in the whole piece is away from your foundation. So here, if I do the same thing and I do kitty corner and I support kitty corner from these two pieces, I can only get up to 28, 28 um, meters because I think these middle pieces aren't supported. They're like one, two away, and it counts that. I'd have two in the middle here, and this one wouldn't be supported, so the whole thing explodes if I go one higher, like this. See, it doesn't, it doesn't really even try. And I think it's because if, like, the middle of this isn't supported yet. So I added a whole bunch of supports to see if I could fix that, and it does actually let me go one higher if I add a support on all four corners and then two in the middle here. If I don't, if I just do the four corners, it still has the same problem and won't let you get to 30. Um, but if you add this middle one, which you do by just coming down here and adding like some horizontal ones across there and then building up the middle like this, if you do this, then it allows you to go all the way to 30 because these middle pieces would be supported. And then the last thing I, I really wanted to do um, was to test if I could just suspend it, like if the stone underneath it was like holding it up somehow. And if if I actually need this stone to get that high, and you don't, you all you need is these wood iron poles. Like here's the 30th, the 15th pole or the 30 meter pole right here, right? And I can get all the way up to 30 meters. This is 30 meters without without any stone underneath it. And this would also be like 30 pieces away right here. So um, if I go any higher than that, it explodes immediately still. So really 30 is your cap. It's going to take a second to calculate. We'll come back to that. One thing that I wanted to clarify was that, oh, see, it just blew up. See, 30 is as high as you're going, no matter what. But like I don't need stone underneath it. All I have to do is brace it with these, with the wood iron poles underneath like these under there, like this. This comes in handy when you're bridge building across ravines and stuff, because you don't want to have to build pillars all the way up of stone. You can just build them with these and then, then have your go across. And if you're building a bridge that's 30 meters up from the ground, you're going to have to build it every <laughs> two spaces. But I mean, that would be ambitious. So. Uh, one thing I do want to clarify, I mean, just as misinformation, building horizontally doesn't help at all. Like connecting stuff like this here won't help your vertical build at all. So horizontal support pieces like this don't help. Um, 
unless you're suspending, right? So if I'm, they do help up here, or I'm suspending it from it like that. But if I'm, if I've got stone underneath it, I don't need to build these. It doesn't make it any more secure or any more stable to build horizontal pieces across. I just need the vertical pieces going up. And as long as you're within one, a one by one stone piece of a, of a support, you should be able to build all the way up to 30 meters. But once again, 30 meters is your hard cap. Um, I think that's everything. That's all of what I found out. Um, good luck. Have happy building. If you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with more Valheim videos because I really like building in this game. Um, and I'm kind of just learning how to video edit and would like to get some more content out there. So thanks a lot.